Hey, this is Eric, and in this video, we're going to look at creating a one word of the year with my Google Slides photo word template. The idea of choosing one word for the year has become a very popular activity to do. It can be a helpful way for anyone to set a goal to work toward or a focus to work on throughout the year. Now, there's lots of templates and tools to help you do this, but a couple years ago, I tried this out by creating what I called a photo word in Google Slides. It's basically a clever way to make it look like you have a picture inside of a word. If you want to learn all the gory details about that, you can check out my earlier blog post as well as my short intro video and my very long deep dive video all about creating photo words. Now, the links for all of that can be found in the description below this video. However, to make things super simple, I have a Google Slides template that you can copy and edit to make your own one word for the year. Let's take a look at how to do that. So first, you just need to get a copy of the template. You can do that at bit.ly slash one word template, or click on the link in the description below the video. Uh, once you do that, it will ask you to create a copy and you'll get your own copy of this Google Slides template. Now, the first few slides here just have some directions, my contact info, an example. But when you get to slide five, that's where you can make your own word. Now, I've got this set up for 2025, but obviously, if you're watching this in the future, you can change that to whatever year you want. And obviously, at the bottom, fill in your own name down there as well. Now, here where it says Word, that's where you're going to put in your word for the year. Uh, this is actually Word Art, and so what you're going to need to do is double click on where it says Word, and that will then open up the spot where you can type in your own word. So just for this example, let's say my word of the year is the word grow. Now, when you do type that in, I would encourage you to type it in in capital letters because the bigger the letters are, the more we're going to be able to see the picture showing from behind the word. So capital letters seem to help with that. So type in your word and press enter. Now, depending upon how large or small your word is, you may need to resize this. Mine actually fit in there perfectly. Uh, but if it didn't, you could just uh, grab the corners and you know shrink it in to make it smaller or stretch it larger to make it bigger. Totally up to you as to how you want to adjust that just so that it fits properly on the slide. All right, now that I've got my word, next I'm going to insert my image that will make look like it is inside of the word. So to do that, I'm going to go up to the Insert menu and go to Image. Uh, I'm going to choose Search the Web and just find a picture off of Google, but you could either upload a picture from your computer, grab one from your drive, use your Google Photos, use your camera, whatever works for you. In this case, I'm just going to search the web. And I'll just type in the word grass, since that should give me something that looks like it's growing. And you know, honestly, this first picture is probably going to be fine. So I'll go ahead and click on that picture and click insert. And there we go. All right, now that I've got the picture, what I'm going to do is resize it so that it just covers the word grow. Um, now, again, it's going to depend on how big your word is and the picture that you chose. This is going to be different for everybody. But in my case, if I wanted to have this cover the word grow and I was to line it up here, um, right away I'm going to see that I'm going to have a little bit of a problem because as I go to stretch it out here to get it to cover the whole word, it's going to extend outside of this box. It's key that we keep it inside of the word art box. That'll all make sense here in just a bit. So it's very possible you might need to do some cropping. I'm going to need to do that. If I'm going to keep this inside the box and have it cover the word, I do need to crop my image. So how do you crop an image? Uh, easiest way is just to double click on it. There is a crop button up in the top. That's fine as well. I find just double clicking works really well. That gives you these dark black lines that you can grab and drag into crop. Now that I have probably over cropped it, which is fine. Um, and then again, you can just click off of it or click the crop button when you're done. Um, I'm going to once again, stretch this out so that it gets to the end here. And now I can see that, well, probably need to extend the crop back out just a bit. I've got it lengthwise covering the word. So I'll just double click on the image once again. And now I'll just remove a little bit of that crop so that it's a little bit bigger there. And then we'll click on the crop button. Perfect. I think I've got it. So now I've got the image so that it's covering the entire word. 
All right, so now is where the fun part comes in. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take this picture and we're going to push it behind the word. And that's what's going to make it look like the image is coming through the inside of the word. So how do you push an image behind the word art? Well, what I can do is click on the image and there's a bunch of ways you can push things back. If you want to go to the uh, menu at the top, that'll work. Go to arrange and then there's an order option and you can choose send backwards. That will push the image backwards. Um, you'll also notice that control and the down arrow will do the same thing. If you're on a Mac, it's probably command and the down arrow. You can also do a right click. If you're a right click person, right click on the image. You'll also find order there and you'll find send backwards. I typically just use that control and the down arrow myself. So I'll do that control down arrow and keep pressing it until there we go. Look at that. And now it pushed it behind the word art. And so now we can see that we've got the word grow. Um, but then in the background, the image is showing through. Now, why does this work? For what it's worth, it really really comes down to the font that we're using here. So this particular word art, if you check up here in the font menu, you'll see we're using one called Zilla Slab Highlight. It's basically an inverted font. It's the only one that does that. All the other fonts don't work that way, but Zilla Slab Highlight, it's a reversed font where the inside is hollow and the outside is colored in. And so that's the trick. That's why that works. So at this point, we're just about done. All we really need to do is make this blend in a little bit better. So what I'm going to do is take the outside of the font of the word art where it's gray here and just make it the same color as my slide and that'll make it look like it's blending in. So if I click on my word art, what I'll do is use the paint can button, the fill color button at the top. Since my background is white, I'll fill the word art with white, which again fills the outside since the inside is transparent. Now that's pretty good. Um, I still do have this black bar around here, so I also want to click on the word art and not just change the fill, but I want to change the border color as well. So I'll also click on that button next to the fill and we'll make that white as well for the border color. And now that really should be it. Now the uh, background and the word art are all the same color, so it looks like that all blends together. Now if you if you had a different color, that would be fine. It's so like if you said, oh, I want the background of my slide to be a light green. Perfectly fine. Just make the word art also have light green for the fill and light green for the, bo for the border. And there you go. Now it all blends in again as well. At that point, you're basically ready to download your, your creation. Just go to the file menu, go to download, and you can download it as a JPEG or a PNG, and you are ready to go. If you end up creating any of these, I would love to see what you make for your one word. Feel free to uh, share those uh, over to me, and I would love to check those out. Thanks so much. And if you made it this far, please consider liking and subscribing, accessing all of my resources at controlaltachieve.com, and connecting with me at bit.ly slash caa-connect, where you'll find my email, social media links, newsletter, and more.